You sent me halfway round the world. I've been to Amsterdam. I've been to Hallenbeck. Ah, ah, ah. I'm not dreaming. Welcome back to the Old Golden Black. Another positive match review. Did not think that I'd be making a third win in the league video. Fantastic performance from front to back. Again, I keep saying it every game, but every single player is having an impact and working together as a group to pull off these fantastic results. Having a little bit of time to reflect on the game yesterday as I got back home at about two o'clock last night, I think that yesterday's performance was better than Derby's. Not in a footballing way, because of, you know, Derby, we played lots and lots of nice football, as Tim Spears described it, it's been filthy. But we had our backs to the wall at points yesterday. We came under a lot of pressure from Hull, and we came out of it with a win. We absolutely deserved that win as well. So at the start of the game, Wolves started in the first five minutes with a goal from Ruben Neves, which was absolutely outstanding. I can see now where the £15 million has come from. Not that I couldn't before, his passing has been exceptional, but now he proved that he can score the odd goal as well. Amazing. And with people talking about him, people mistaking him for Jota, to respond in that way with the goal cutting him from the left, hitting it with his right into the corner. If you watch it on the highlights, it was from even further away than I thought it was at first. It must have been from about 30, 35 yards out. Keep it in standard chance. It was, as Nuno described it, poetry. Hull then came into the game a little bit more, but they only really created chances from set pieces, which their equaliser came from. Wolves failed to clear a corner, which was a short corner, and then whipped in. Ruddy, possibly to blame, he came and sort of flapped at it a little bit and then cleared off the line and it bounced around a bit. Dawson then scoring for Hull. But aside from that, really, Hull didn't have a lot of chances from open play. Now, Enebakari, again, I thought was having a poor half. Lots of quick passing, then it comes to Enebakari and he sort of tries to beat two or three men and he slows it down a little bit and loses the ball quite often. But there was a point, a couple of minutes to go before half-time, where he picked up the ball on the right-hand side, beat two men, put the ball across the six-yard box, Jota was there at the back post to tap it in to make it 2-1, and that was an excellent, excellent way to end the half. After half time Hull came into the game a little bit more, they had a couple of chances, John Ruddy making a fantastic save down to his right. Hull then hit the bar from a corner which every all the Hull fans were cheering as if it had gone in. So I thought it had gone in as well but somehow we managed to stop it from going in. There was nine minutes of injury time at the end of the game, that was due to Abel Hernandez picking up a nasty looking injury. Apparently he's snapped his Achilles tendon, which will mean that he's out for a long, long time. And he is a key part of how Hull play. And that was just at a point where Hull were building a lot of momentum and piling on the pressure. And it came just at the right time. It stopped their momentum and Wolves were able to take advantage of that then. As Hull were throwing men forward, Cavaliero picked the ball up and ran about halfway line. Put a lovely through ball for Dicko, who very calmly and composed... Not like last season, he didn't rush it, he took his time, put it through the goalkeeper's legs and sent us all into ecstasy to make it 3-1 and secure the result. Now as there was so much stoppage time, Wolves very, very silly tackle from Doherty who apart from that had had a very good game again in the right wing back. He's such a vital role in that team because Neves knows exactly where he is. If you look, watch them on Saturday now, the two wing backs stay on those bylines the whole game and Neves is just able to he doesn't have to look up he knows that if he pings the ball out to the byline that Doherty or Douglas will be there so Doherty gave away that penalty which Myler scored to make it 3-2 in the 100th minute of the game which I've never seen before but Wolves are able to keep the ball for the remaining couple of seconds of the game and come away with a fantastic 3-2 win against another relegated team and we are now Nine points out of nine, which nobody expected when the fixtures came out. On top of that, the way that we are playing is beyond anything we expected. But this is just completely different to anything that we're used to. The way that they're playing football, the way that they know each other, the way that Nuno speaks after the game and before the game, he's so calm and collected and interesting to listen to. He talks about growing and learning, which is what we need as a football club for opposition managers to say that we are the best team in the league granted there's only three games gone granted Slutsky's only just come to England but he would have watched us in all three of the games that we played so far he'd have watched other teams as well this season and he knows about football and he talked about how proud he was that his whole team managed to score two goals against us it feels a little bit dangerous to be honest at the moment because I'm getting carried away, and I think a lot of Wolves fans are getting carried away. But I think there's good reason for it. I think we could, this could be the year 
where everything clicks into place. Now, I was thinking as well on the way back home from the game last night about Brighton, who I saw last season and were probably the best footballing team that we saw down the Molyneux. But comparing our team now to that team, I'd say that we are much better than Brighton were at the end of last season. Just the way that we're moving the ball around. And, and they're so clever as well, the players. There was a time where Hull were piling on the pressure, Wolves won the ball back, set up again, and just kept the ball for a couple of minutes and slowed it down. Last season, we didn't have the nous to do that. It's just such an exciting time to be a Wolves fan at the moment. And it makes a six-hour round trip to watch a football match absolutely worth it. Difficult to pick a man of the match from yesterday's performance, as, again, all of them played so well. But if I had to, I probably would say Neves. The way that he just controlled the game was fantastic. The real test now is Saturday, because... It'll be Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, which they haven't done yet because lots of them didn't play against Yeovil. Don't expect there to be any changes. I hope they've had a day off training today. They haven't had a day off at all yet since the 1st of July. I'm tired after yesterday. I'm sure they will be. Sorry if I've rambled on a little bit this video, but I'm just so excited about everything that's going on at the football club at the moment. It's such an exciting time to be a Wolves fan. Please let me know what you thought about the game in the comments down below. Don't forget to drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for the only place that's going to bring you regular updates and reviews and previews of all the games. Come on the Wolves. We're going up. Come on. Come on.